And who doesn't love a beautiful antique? Definitely makes your household look even more incredible. With us right now, uh, he's the owner of the Ottawa Antique Market. His name is David Smith. And good to have you on the program, David. Uh, you're a lover of antiques, I'm guessing, if you own a store called the Ottawa Antique Market. A lifetime. Yeah, a <laughs> lifetime. What is, what is it about antiques that just makes you so happy? It's the, the hunt, the history, the quality. Yeah. It's a little bit of everything that kind of gets you interested, and once you're hooked, you're hooked. Yeah, to see uh, that heritage, to see the vintage looks. Absolutely. Can you define an antique for me? Uh, how far do you have to go back to be considered an antique? Technically, the, the, the true definition, 100 years or more. Um, a lot of things can be collectible, but not necessarily an antique. Okay. Um, for example, a camera from the 40s or 30s, 20s, not considered quite antique, but it's almost there, falls more into a collectible category versus an antique. Because mm -hmm. I'm just wondering one day, okay, so it's the year 2018, so in 2118, would stuff be going on uh, right now be considered an antique in 100 years from now, would you say, as an expert? Yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, you know, it, a lot of times it's a circa 1890, circa 1900. It's yeah. not a defined date. Um, European antiques are a lot older versus yeah. what we have here in North America. Um, so it, it's everybody's own interpretation. Okay. Uh, 30 years you're celebrating 30 years this, year? this year. Congratulations. Yeah. Where you. exactly is uh, your market? We are located in Ottawa's Old South uh, at 1179 Bank Street. We are about four blocks south of Lansdowne Park, TD Place. Okay. Um, basically, we're right smack in the middle between Lansdowne Park and Billingsbridge Plaza. 30 years, that's uh, amazing. Now, what kinds of antiques and collectibles will people find? I know you brought some examples yep. here with you today. So There's, if people uh, drop by, what will they see? Everything from furniture, paintings, jewelry, estate jewelry, diamond jewelry, um, oil lamps, Mm -hmm. Paintings. The list is big. It's, yeah. You know, I can go on for good ten minutes. I can imagine. In categories. Yeah. Uh, but basically, if it's old, there's a lot of stuff there. Okay. It's eleven thousand square feet under one roof. Wow. So it's uh, it's a large complex. Uh, and I know it's jammed with treasures in there. And there's thirty yeah. different you know professional dealers inside the antique market. They're they're on hand all the time, or or um, most of them. It's it's kind of uh, they don't have to be there all the time. My wife and I run the shop. Uh, the majority are there on a full-time basis, mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's we're open six days a week, mm -hmm. closed on Tuesdays. Um, but basically, if they're there, they're more than willing to talk to you about antiques. Okay, so if they're there and, and say I have a piece that's an antique, am I able to bring my piece in? Absolutely. And they can have it appraised or, or talk about the or history of it Identification perhaps? or history or uh, a lot of people bring stuff in they're interested in selling. Mm -hmm. um, it's not so much an appraisal. That's a bit of a different thing if you want a written appraisal for insurance. Um, mm -hmm. If you're interested in selling it, the dealer will look at it, the appropriate dealer, and he will either make a an offer based on what it is if he's interested in purchasing the item. Okay. Can you tell us about some of the items you brought sure, with you here, over to you here today? First one is a clock from Peganaw Clock Company, actually from Berlin, Ontario, now Kitchener. Okay. Uh, changed just before the First World War. Mm -hmm. um, fairly rare clock because anything after 1916, the name was changed to Kitchener, Ontario. Hmm. So it was a very short period that this clock was made. That's and interesting. It's an mission arts and crafts style. Wow. Sort of looks like a cuckoo clock. I'm expecting a bird to come out. No, <laughs> we have no. those as well. Do you really? Yes, we do. <laughs> do they make new cuckoo clocks? Are they, all yes. cuckoo clocks antiques? No, they still make no. them. Okay, yeah. interesting. Yeah. All right, so moving along from this clock. Uh, next one is actually a silver inkwell. It's English. It is by uh, jo John and Joseph Stay, uh, and Angel. Uh, it's London, 1853. Fairly rare. It is sterling silver, gilt, uh, the, the Shakespeare on top, Socrates, and other scholars all around the outside. And it was done with uh, five slots for quill pens, not hmm. fountain pens. Amazing. Could, could I ask you what a value would be for On the inkwell, $7,000. $7,000. Okay, so hold that tight on your way out, okay, okay. just to make sure that that doesn't go missing. What uh, is that beside? And that, that looks like something from out of uh, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Is that a... It is a field telescope. Okay. A lot of people confuse it with a uh, maritime or uh, a ship's telescope, okay. but they were a general use. Okay. They were done for um, basically anybody that was uh, a backpacker, a hunter, uh, explorer. Um, Check it out. There it is, yeah. There we are. Okay. Uh, well marked English, circa about 1900. Interesting. Okay. That, that is something. I don't think I've ever seen one of those in real life. Uh, we have an oil lamp beside you it as is. well. It and is. what would be the age on this? It's about 1890. 1890. 
Uh, it's a blue snowflake, fairly rare example. The color is what makes it unusual. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, yeah, because you don't see that style of color. A lot of times you'll see them just in a clear glass. Okay. Um, they did them in red, they did them in cranberry, they did them in a blue. The blue is a fairly rare color. And the camera beside you as well? Now you see that in movies. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably <laughs> we always pretty much a, the only uh, place you'd see that. We have a large selection of cameras. Um, they did, this one is a bellows camera, so it folds up completely flat to about here. Um, they were general use cameras for virtually anybody. Okay. A very simple point and shoot camera. Okay, and the funny bird on the end? <laughs> the funny bird on the end is actually a Quebec folk art piece. Okay. Uh, about 1950, uh, very large uh, collector base on, on folk art. Okay. Um, all hand done, all hand painted, all hand carved. Okay. Uh, for some of these items that are well over 100 years, 100, 150 years, I mean, how do they stay so nice? But what's the, what's the trick to keeping these antiques as nice as they are? Taking good care of them. As simple as it's, that. Just, it is. It's the owner. Just be mindful. You know, people that collect antiques are passionate about what they own. Okay. So what they do is usually take very good care of it. They polish it. They clean it. Uh, they're very careful moving it, mm -hmm. packing it. Um, if you, and dealers, if anything needs repair prior to selling, is usually what they'll do. Okay. Now you're open six days a week. Six days a week. Six days a week. We close Tuesdays. Uh, now, now, would would you or, or some of your staff be willing to go off site if someone has an antique that's too Absolutely. heavy to yeah. to move? Obviously, do to it show often. you. Yeah. yeah, you do that so, very often. Uh, basically, it's called a house call. So yeah. if someone has a lot of furniture for sale or paintings or something that's not easily moved, we can gladly go to the house. All right, Auto Antique Market. Just fascinating to see all these old pieces just come to life still and just it is. be a part of uh, just existing after 150 years. Yeah. And that being worth $7,000 blows my mind. <laughs> <laughs> David Smith, thank you very much You're for being here today. Thank we you appreciate very much. your time. Coming up, what is Nimble Kids? We'll find out together next right here on Daytime Ottawa.